I became an esthetician because growing up, mm -hmm. I had I suffer from acne, mm -hmm. and acne had affected my self esteem. And to the point where I would never forget this, I wish I actually knew the person that said this to me. I remember walking out of my building, and back then I used to wear a ton of makeup, mm. like it was loud, Which like orange eyebrow, like I said orange eyebrow, orange eyeshadow, mm -hmm. wait, why am I saying orange? Green eyeshadow, mm -hmm. just really bold colors. And mm -hmm. I remember walking out the building, and this guy was randomly just like, he was like, mom, why are you wearing so much makeup? Like, mm -hmm. you don't need to wear all that makeup. And it hit me that day, and I was like, I'm wearing all this makeup, because I was hiding my face, mm -hmm. like my skin. Mm -hmm. And I remember even dating in my 20s that I never wanted to go, like if a guy asked me to go out, mm -hmm. I wanted to know where we were going. Mm -hmm. It was a restaurant, I need to check the restaurant, I need to make sure that it was dim lights. Wow. It was so bad. If we went out on a date, I, I made sure I went out when the sun was going down. Yeah, it was really, Dang, really. Yeah, that's it was, a lot. Yeah, it was bad. So, and my mom is, well, my mom and dad is an esthetician. My mom and my dad mm -hmm. are business owners. Okay. And my mom is in, she was doing colonics. Okay. And one of her clients saw my skin, and they, people always want to recommend things for your skin. One yeah. thing I want to say, when you see someone with, like, problematic skin, like, you don't have to give advice. Yeah, if they didn't actually require <laughs> Like, yeah, because all you're doing is pointing out the insecurity, so. Yeah, that's a good point. She that's told me, Yeah, you. so she told me, um, oh, you know, try it out, try this um, this school in the city. They do a lot of natural products. You should go there mm -hmm. and see if they can help you with your skin. Mm -hmm. I go to the school, mm -hmm. and I ended up saying, well, I want to actually attend the school. Yeah, oh, okay. So I went there to get help with my skin. I ended up saying, you know what, I actually want to learn, sign up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I said, as soon as I finished college, I'm coming. I think I had like either one more year. It was a short period of time. I, mm -hmm. I, think I knew I was almost done with college. And I said, as soon as I'm done, I'm coming here. Mm -hmm. And yeah, as soon as I was done, like I think like a week later, I went to sign up. Mm. And went to aesthetic school, and that's when my skin got better. Because I started to learn about my skin, learn mm. about the food I was eating. Um, that's when I got my first chemical pill. And mm. once I did my chemical pill, that was it. That like was my face it. cleared up. Yeah. And um, that's how I got into it. Oh, okay. But I always knew. And then also, I missed a very important part. Back then, we didn't have anywhere to go to like, for facial. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't have anywhere. Yeah, no. So the only places that I had to, um, that were available for me was going into like another neighborhood, mm. which was like a Caucasian. Oh, so you, you said we, girl, keep it a stack. We was black people. Oh, black. Yeah. Oh, so you have to go to a white neighborhood to get. I have to go to white. <laughs> we keep it a stack. I didn't know what to you say. Know, there's no PC over here. Yeah. So okay. basically, like in my, I'm from Flatbush, Brooklyn. So we didn't have that. All we had no, was we like did not. no at all. No. Like zero. We had sneaker stores and 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 nail salons. So, yeah. Um, Popeyes. No, it, the stuff it, they put on. Yeah, yeah, but like we didn't have anywhere that did like lashes, mm -hmm. facials, and specific. Mm -hmm. So I went to like um, right, um, uh, Brighton Beach. No, no, no. Um, like Kings Highway. That the area. Russians. Oh, is that okay? That's fine. Okay, I went to the Russians area, and that's who was doing my skin. Mm -hmm. Then I and then my mom had another client that went to get tattoo makeup. Uh, and back then it wasn't big how no, it is it now not. at all. So she's talking about this. So then, they've been knowing about this for a minute. Oh no, yeah, it's been around oh, for years. Oh, we just late to the party. We just late. Okay, so um, per usual. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so per usual. I went to this place in Queens and I was going there. Mm -hmm. but at the same time, someone recommended to go to dermatologist. Mm -hmm. Went to dermatologist. The same time, seeing this woman to do my facial. Dermatologist recommended birth control. And antibiotics for my skin. Oh wow! I know you take birth control for yeah, for acne. Learning something. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So you didn't know that for real? No. Oh yeah, it's really, really good. Oh. But, but my mom didn't want me on it because she's like she connects to two sex. You know? Like, yeah. Yeah. She's like, uh, uh. No, my daughter don't need to be on that because mm -hmm. she's not having sex and she don't. You know? So uh -huh. she was like, no. I get it. So I went. So my so the doctor gave me some like topical things to put on my face. So I go to my esthetician in mm -hmm. Queens. I'm like, whatever you do today is fine, but we need to use this product that the mm -hmm. that the dermatologist gave me. She kept telling me, no, 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 we can't use it. I said he gave it to me. Like really? now, now my pores gonna be open. Mm -hmm. Like I need this to like penetrate. And knowing you, you was very adamant. She listened to me because, and my. face face was it was like inflamed the neck when Ooh. it was at this point it was like brittle like a, i call oh. myself like a brittle face it was so bad it was so literally in my entire face oh. so then i was like hmm so that's so then after that then i went to aesthetic school because i was like okay i tried everything now 
Mm. So I went back and I joined the school. I was so passionate about it. And I finished in like, you had to complete like 600 hours. I finished mm. it at less than six months. Oh, you was Because on. I was there at all day. I was there part-time, but I stayed from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Oh, you was on Oh, it. yeah, yeah. You yeah. were serious. The, yeah, I was uh. very serious. So I finished that and I got my, um, what you call it, my temp license. Mm-hmm. I didn't even wait for the permanent license. Soon I got my temp license, I went and I started my business. Mm. That's what I saw. I end up, you know, starting. My and business. what was like the process? Because a lot of people trying to start their businesses now, mm. and it's easier said than done. What was the process of like going and starting your business? Like, do you save up money? Do you get a bank loan? Like, what was the process? That's a like? good question. Yeah, what was the right. Process of that? So for me, I never. I never took out a business loan. Good. So what I did, sorry. Right. So maybe I had a, a little um, help from my mom. And when I say Praise that. Praise God for good parents who help you it's out. It's true. It's, it's true. It's very needed. <laughs> what I mean by that is my mom had a space and she had a room that she wasn't using. And I asked her if I could use it. And she gave me the room. Mm-hmm. I used that. I didn't pay rent or anything. Amen to that. I know. Right? Such a blessing. Yeah. What? I know back then she probably, she probably felt like I was like um, using, not using, like. Yeah, like using, like yeah, take advantage. Shot, I'm, yes, I'm your child. I'm going to take yeah, advantage. Yeah, so I was working <laughs> there, had my own clients, and then back then Groupon was fairly new. So oh. when I got on Groupon, I got like I was flooded with clients oh, wow. because when you looked on Groupon for like eyelash extensions or specific eyelash extensions, mm-hmm. nobody was offering it. It was mm. so new, so I was getting all of those clients. And the great thing is, is that. I retain like 90% of those clients. Wow. And to it's this day? even more crazier that clients still come to me now that came to me from back then. That's cr- that's I loyalty. Know. I know. That's, you're doing your damn thing mm-hmm. because, you no, know, in this kind of business, people switch all the time. Right. So it's just, oh no, have- some, some stop, but they came right back. They came back home. Because <laughs> they know what's up. <laughs> right? Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. And they tell me up to this day, because then you know I found you on Groupon. And I was like, really? But so long ago, wow. I don't remember. Yeah. So, yeah, and that's how I ended up building my clientele yeah. back then. I think it's harder now because mm-hmm. Groupon is so... Yeah. Yeah. So, you would say that in order to do keep that clientele is knowing what the heck you're doing, what I'm mm-hmm. gathering from what you're saying, know what you're doing, be good at what you do, be great at what you do, I should Consistent, say. Consistent, too. Consistent. Yeah. And I think from a customer's perspective, mm-hmm. customer service. Right. Child. I know. So I won't say that like <laughs> I'm I was the best because remember I didn't know anything about mm-hmm. customer service. I never worked anywhere. Yeah, because you just came so out of college. So I'm learning mm-hmm. how to deal with people. And I was young. I think I was like 22. Mm. I was young. So meanwhile, I was getting drunk. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I didn't know anything. So like, mm-hmm. I'm, I've gotten so much better now mm-hmm. with dealing with people. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think I have more patience now. Mm-hmm. I realize that, um, you know, some of us are a little cuckoo, mm-hmm. some people. So I just learned how to deal, deal with, with some, those people. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like some like people come in with attitudes and sometimes I just have to ignore it because it's, I have to remember it's not me. Mm-hmm. You know? Right. They but came in like this. Yeah, but so I'm just learning. I think I've gotten so much better throughout the years because mm-hmm. back then, like, I feed off of your energy. Mm. And um, if you came with an attitude, you have an attitude. I didn't really give it back. I just kind of shut down. And mm-hmm. people, equi- like, they they equate that to saying, like, oh, she has an attitude. She's not friendly and stuff mm-hmm. like that. But you yeah. can't be. So, so I got advice to then. those who are trying to start their own or do have the business. Mm-hmm. You cannot let your customers affect right. how you move. Mm hmm. Yeah, it did. Yeah, because at the end of the day, regardless of how, because I'm teach, I'm speaking from a teacher's perspective. Mm-hmm. Regardless of how they came in, mm-hmm. you are still expected to stay neutral. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? It's just what it is. Yeah, and I'm learning how to like um, divorce myself from clients. Like if someone, <laughs> like you know, my space is like it's very important that when yeah. someone comes into my space, like I don't want you to disrupt my spirit. Yeah, right. you know. So if I feel a little like some people are a little off, or, mm-hmm. or it just and how yeah, yeah how I do learned, you manage it as a believer? So I learned, I'm sure God spoke to you mo- many times. So there was this time where I had someone come in and. I don't remember the specific of like our conversation, but it was really it was a weird conversation. She was into like I don't know if they call like new age spiritualism. Religion. Yeah, like just talking about like crystals and yeah, it was just mm-hmm. a weird conversation. And I remember when she left, mm-hmm. I called my mom. I was like, 
mom, I'm scared to walk in my space in the back. I said, somebody left here and I just felt really- They left the spirit there too. Mm. Yeah, it was like the weirdest feeling. My mom was like, I need you to walk in that space and rebuke it and Amen. pray and all that. And I've never been, like, I like she left and I didn't want to go in the back. Yeah, because she left something there. <laughs> it was she can't. weird, but I had a few encounters like that. Like somebody came one time and I haven't seen this woman in years. She comes in and, she, and at the end of the service, she was like, oh, what's your birthday? And she write down all these numbers and she was like, so I need you to do this and find out what's the numbers. And the, my mom was like, we believe in Jesus Christ in here. Okay. My mom just straight on. She was like, take this with you. Right. And she ain't never come back. Okay. But it was weird because me being naive, I didn't know. Even conversation yeah. with people, you know, I, like I only, I only play gospel in my business, mm. right? So a lot of times, like it sparked conversations, and like a lot of times, people will talk about like God with me. But so then, sometimes, we, you know, entertaining like mm. God, God, God. But then I realized at the end, like, wait, which we ain't God? talking about the same God. No, <laughs> which God? I, just, I was asked, which God? Jesus? No, or? I realize yeah. that now. Yeah, people don't talk. No, but it's all about age and experience and mm. knowledge. Like, you no, know, it's different gods. I realize that. Yeah. And I was like, wait a minute, we would never talk about the same God. Yeah, so I always ask, I believe in God. Jesus Christ? Oh, oh. no, I believe in, I said, oh no, I don't, we don't believe in the same. I'm oh, very. So, so you, you say I, it that I, right. I, what's oh. up? Which God are we talking about? Oh, I probably need to do that. Yeah, I would say do that. I always ask, which God are we talking about? You talking about Jesus Christ? Or are you talking oh. about Buddha? Because anybody could, be, a rock could be a God for somebody. Right. So which God are we talking exactly. about? Uh, another thing too that I was thinking when you were talking, I was just like, do you ever pray over? My like business? When you, yeah. So I do, and I need to be a little bit more consistent, but I do. Do you anoint the place? So my mom did it for me mm -hmm. when they was doing the construction. Mm -hmm. She and her prayer warriors came in there. Like literally mm -hmm. the, the contractors came the next day and was like, Kadeen, there's a whole bunch of like handprints all over the wall. <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, my mom and them was praying with the, um, oil. the anointing oil. Uh -huh. yeah. uh -huh. <laughs> it was like handprints all over. Yep. But you know what? I need to do that. Do it yourself. Kadeen, I don't know if you, you probably will not see, but there's nothing, but it's all your prints on, the, on these walls. I've never done that before. Whenever, I'll give you an example. I don't know if I have like the right terms to like. Ain't no right terms. God help me. So <laughs> it, it, it's usually just, I keep a real some God, please bless my house. Father God, I ask you to anoint this house. Mm -hmm. Line that gate with your blood. Mm -hmm. That any demon that try to step Get into this house, smell the stench of the blood that was sacrificed. Mm -hmm. they, they, they run away. It runs them away. Very simple. His blood, because that was his sacrifice. Mm -hmm. And you just ask it to line your whole house. And I would always say, any spirit that do not belong or do not match with your Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. let them flee. Mm -hmm. Okay? I need to get better. I'm dope. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to lie. When I do start my mornings mm -hmm. in prayer and devotion, my day is the most beautiful I bet. day. Yeah.